we're good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June 30th session of the Prescott Planning and Zoning Commission. I'd like to welcome uh, two city councilmen here, Mr. Blair and Mr. Lamerson. And uh, welcome back. It's been a while, all the commissioners. Uh, Joe Gardner, Phil Good, uh, George Sheets, Ken Maverick, Terry Marshall, Mr. Len Scamardo, and uh, our secretary is Darla today. And I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of um, April 14th. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Phil? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I just have a comment on the uh, section regarding discussion, section two, where um, we're referencing commissioners in general, speaking about density and comments. And my particular feeling is that uh, all government agencies need clarity, transparency, and accountability. So I would prefer that comments be attributed to individual commissioners and not necessarily be grouped, um, which would allow more uh, accountability for our justifications and comments and reasoning. Well, I think sometimes we do it both ways. No, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're in discussion about the minutes. So we have a question. Mr. Uh, Chairman. We don't, you know, we do, but we, sometimes they mention names and, and uh, sometimes they don't. And, it's always been that way. I don't know. We, we can, in specific circumstances where there is considerable debate about an item, identify individual commissioners with their position. We have no problem with that. Okay. Um, it's been a longstanding policy of the city not to do verbatim minutes, so we have to be careful we don't turn them into verbatim by attributing every comment to, to the person who made it. Okay. Um, but we can certainly take situations um, on a case-by-case -case basis and where it's appropriate that a particular commissioner um, gets attributed to that particular comment, we can we can certainly look at that and address that. Okay. I think that that's a good solution. Let planning staff look into it. Modify the, the motion then to, to have that provision provided for. Okay. So the planning staff kind of look into that and review it. We'll take that into account okay. during future meetings and looking at future sets of minutes. All right. Any other discussion? Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, consider uh, a motion for the meeting of uh, <laughs> April 28th. Minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. I have a motion to second. Any, any additional comments or discussion? Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Say aye. 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 Okay. All right, next item, site plan review uh, process discussion. George? Well, we gave you a staff report that laid out the reasoning why you have a number of uh, site plans before you today. And I just wanted to do a quick synopsis of that so that folks in the audience and folks listening over the, um, the television will understand why these items are before you. Uh, the issue specifically is relating to site plan approvals, which is a, a function that uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission has had for years with the city. Primarily, you get full plats or full rezonings with site plans that are part of them, and we very rarely bring you an independent or separate site plan for review and approval. Uh, the reason for that is typically that occurs at uh, staff level review. It's a purely technical review, but it occurs at a staff level review um, at, at the time of a building permit submittal to the city. While the Planning Commission doesn't have anything directly to do with the allocation of water for projects, the Water Issues Committee and ultimately the City Council have an intense desire for the Planning Commission to review the technical merits of proposals that will require a water allocation. And those could be any number of things from site plan approvals to subdivision plats. So we already have an established process for subdivision plats. They all come to you. You make a recommendation that goes to the city council. The city council would not allocate water to a subdivision plat that didn't have sufficient, uh, from technical perspective, sufficient design characteristics that would merit such a thing. 
The problem with other types of development that don't require a subdivision plat is that if you wait to the point where a permit application is submitted, those projects can be very large projects. You have one today for 200 apartment units. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent to develop plans for those that are sufficient for building permit review. And requiring that an applicant spend that much time, effort, and money into developing plans that then would go before the Water Issues Committee to find out whether or not uh, the project is technically feasible, there are always modifications that are necessary during the permit process. This is something separate. Um, it seemed onerous, and the city's water policy, council's new water policy, specifically tried to find some alternative means to get those projects that don't require a subdivision plat or a rezoning through a review by this body so that they could make a, an informed decision about whether that particular project uh, appropriately should obtain water through them. Your review and recommendations are a piece of the determining factor that council ultimately uses to make that decision. It's not the entire purpose or uh, cause for issuance or not issuance of water allocation but it is a significant piece of it, and they rely on you for other types of reviews for those very same reasons. So it was felt appropriate by council to desire to have you review these projects at a site plan level where thousands, but not hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent to design the project. The idea, again, is to get your technical review your, your input is something that council takes very seriously and has taken very seriously with all of the other types of projects that you review. We have just slightly modified the review process um, for site plans for this purpose, but you have in fact, those of you who have been on a while, have in fact had site plans come before you before for certain developments, generally large commercial developments. Um, you did a site plan review and approval process for both Walmart stores, for uh, the mall, for those types of large commercial developments in the past. And again, the reasoning for that was the same as the reasoning here. Before you get into an expenditure of a large sum of money to develop building plans, you have an opportunity to find out if there are significant feasibility issues with the site design itself. So I just wanted to give you a quick heads up and, and run through that to let you know why you're getting site plans. And we'll continue to get site plans uh, submitted for those projects that don't require a subdivision plat or rezoning. If they require either of those actions, you automatically would get it anyway. So the only thing new about this is you're now getting things that typically would go straight to a building permit. If you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer those. Again, the idea here is to get your technical expertise so that council can plug that information into their decision-making process. Okay, normally when we do a site plan review, it's if there's a zoning change or a, or a, a subdivision. That's correct, Or a large often. commercial project. Um, and, and we look into that with a lot of detail. That's correct. Okay, but what you're saying to us here that you'd like us to look at a lot of projects that we would never normally see. That is absolutely which correct. Which would be handled normally by staff, but you want us to do kind of a feasibility. <laughs> I mean, almost saying, yes, okay, you can get this many units on here. You probably can get this many units and this much parking, and it's not going to be a detriment to the community surrounding uh, neighborhood. So. Uh, you know, go ahead and uh, allocate water. I mean, is that what you want us to do? Well, what we're asking for is for you to make a recommendation that it is or isn't appropriate to forward to the city council okay. for them to make the determination as to whether or not water is appropriate. Well, we are not going to uh, be again. We it. we are we are this body's purpose is to look at the the site design and its feasibility. Your expertise is the land development code and the requirements there. So that's what council's looking for. And again, they plug that in along with a lot of other issues um, into their decision-making process before they allocate water. But we wouldn't be scrutinizing it in the same amount of detail. We would oh. normally do a site plan review. You, you could, but you don't need. You, right. Well, you wouldn't need to go to the same level that you would go to if you had, for instance, um, a Walmart proposal. Um, in, in the case where it's a large project, perhaps you'd need more information, and you can certainly request more information from us. Well, if like it's a small these, project... Most of these projects, for instance, they don't have uh, 
uh, sections through the site. They don't have right. uh, uh, detailed grading plans. Right. There, there's a lot of information that we don't have. To, so all we can do is almost a, a, a cursory review. We, 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 I think what we're looking for is a, a limited review, but looking at those major issues that could be detrimental to the community or to adjacent property owners, or that could, once the project moves further along, actually stop it from occurring for technical reasons. Um, traffic access, um, no availability to um, city services or utilities. Generally, we're going to tell you that part of it as part of our staff report to you. But again, what we're looking for, I think, at this point is, does this make sense? Does it make sense where it is? And does the layout of the project make sense in the form of okay. its site plan? I think it's a matter of semantics. So you, you want us to look at uh, more or less a conceptual review? A, a preliminary review, yes, okay. sir. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, George, I think this is a great idea. Uh, I know personally that the amount of money that has to get spent before a uh, property owner or developer knows if he's going to have a deal is, is sometimes just huge. And um, regulations through a city could trip you up at any place along the line. So I think it's great that we do this. I think it encourages, I think it helps streamline our city so that people can come in on a property that's already zoned and get some idea of the feasibility through the city if it's going to work. Uh, without having to spend two or three hundred thousand dollars to get there, so I, I love this idea. I commend whoever uh, came up with this idea. I think it's a good one. I, I, I think because this is kind of the first time we've seen this type of thing, uh, where it didn't involve a zoning. Right. The presumption is the properties would be good for that type of use because it's already zoned for that. But I think as we go down the line, if we get a lot more of these. It would be handy to hear from, uh, say, traffic, because uh, those are the, some of the questions that we've come up with. And I know some of them, I'm not trying to steal the thunder, but uh, as we progress through looking at just site plans, it might be a good idea to look at some of the other departments that could be here to ask a quick question that might solve some of those issues. But And we can certainly do that. If, if there are questions that you have in advance, and you let us know, we'll do our best to have someone at the meeting. If there are questions that come up during the process of discussion at the meeting and you feel the need to defer action on an item, your purview to do so. We, we have sufficient staff and, and um, adequately trained staff to come and answer any question that you have. Uh, and I, I did I, see that, sir. I think, that <laughs> I think that's great. And I commend you for this process. I think it's a great convenient process for the public to be able to come through and see if their property uh, could be used for exactly what it's zoned for. So thank you for this. George? Okay. Um, one example where I thought this could have helped was the base of school. I don't believe that came before planning and zoning and the project that was going to be on that site beforehand was a, was a Mormon church that there was going to be a city street that ran the entire length of the property. It will base of school came in. It's it's still a long 15 acre extended property, but there's no way to get to the back end of that property. Today it would have been handy if we would have put in a city street along there like we were with the Mormon Church, so that we could provide access to this 200 unit uh, and that's going in the mobile home park. You know, so that you know traffic issues are are those that should also be and connectivity issues that should also be included in the site plan reviews early on because there are ripple effects on the on the neighboring properties that may not be developed yet. Yeah, I think traffic and fire probably the two that top my list is things that would be uh, uh, important to you know. just so just so you know the part of the process that happens before you get it, all of those departments are involved in the review process. So if we, if we get a major issue brought up by any one of those departments, it, it's not going to land in front of you without a clear explanation of what that issue is. So if, if the fire department says, no, no, you need a secondary access and we can't live without it, then you won't see it until they have their secondary access. If, if there are if there's insufficient utilities, water or sewer, line size or pressure or volume to 
permit a project to happen, you won't see it. So some of this gets vetted through staff at the beginning of the process. Right. Then we get your professional and technical expertise. Then it goes to the city council and then they go through this process if they get water. They go through this process of obtaining a building permit which involves much more detail, much more thorough review by city staff in all of the different departments. How are the projects selected for this abbreviated review? Those that require water allocation. Okay. It's, it comes down to that simple. No so a subdivision plat or any, anything other than um, a one or two unit um, uh, residential type use that can be handled administratively. So anything above that is going to be something before you, which is why you see uh, some of these are uh, relatively small and probably not something you're used to seeing. A uh, 12 unit apartment is not something that typically would come before you unless there was a rezoning required or a subdivision plat required. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions? I have a question. George, does Sir. this mean that it becomes a two step process? but the second step would be more streamlined? There are multiple steps. Uh, there's a first step through staff, then there's a second step through this body, then it will go to the Water Issues Committee, which is a subcommittee of City Council for determination as to whether or not a recommendation to the full council would occur for water allocation. And if it goes to council and council says yes to the water allocation, then they come back to staff again for the full building permit submittal and review process. So uh, it, you've got five or six steps. So what are we actually being requested to do? To recommend what? That the project, the council. project appears to be feasible and compatible. Okay. Those are the two issues that I think we need the most from you because of your expertise and background and knowledge of the LDC. So it is a feasibility situation. So George, um, you know, if the if the property is zoned for the use and it fits zoning, setbacks are all right, parking's all right. Um, you know, I got a difficult time turning them down. I mean, somebody comes in and says, "I met all your regulations." You know, why are you saying no? That said, um, one of my personal bugaboos is grading. So, mm -hmm. if if there was something on, on a preliminary basis that showed. Um, most of these don't have any real terrain issues, but a couple do. Um, if there was some preliminary information along those lines, that would be beneficial to me. So what, what I've heard so far in, in your discussion amongst yourselves is that there are a couple of issues that you want to make sure we include in the future. And if it's sufficient to require deferring this time around, we can include for your next meeting. Um, we'll try to make sure that there's at least preliminary grading information for anything that we bring to you in the future. And the same for traffic. If there are comments from our traffic engineer uh, about a project, we'll include those comments. Generally, what we've done in the past is include those only where there's a significant concern on his part about traffic. The same with, with grading. If it's a minor grading, we generally haven't done that. But we can certainly make sure we include those. Yeah, and you know, some of these are pretty obvious pre-graded sites. It's not a right. an issue. Right. Or relatively shallow sites, yeah. yes. Now, before these come to us for review, um, staff's already looked at, has uh, traffic already looked at them? Yes. So okay. we, we've reviewed it, uh, the, the zoning department reviews it, engineering reviews it for water utilities, sewer utilities, okay. grading. Uh, fire department has reviewed it for access and, and um, whether or not water pressures and those types of things are, ex are acceptable to them. Traffic engineering has looked at it. Um, all, all of the typical reviews that would occur for building permit have occurred on a limited basis right. because we've only asked for limited information at this stage. Uh, all of those same reviewers will look at it again for the permit stage when we get full sets of plans. But we can assume that all those reviewers are saying, yes, this project's feasible when it comes here. If we get a significant issue that comes up from a particular reviewer, uh, again, my previous uh, comment, if the fire department says, oh, no way, you can't do this without a second exit or whatever, <coughs> we okay. would we would not bring it to you until that issue is resolved. So it has to be... It has to be at least able to meet city code in the, in the perspective of staff before we bring it to you for that feasibility and compatibility review that we're asking you okay. to do. 
But that all, but that would include traffic and fire, right? Already yes, they're before, already involved. This. Okay, that's correct. All right. Any other questions regarding this process, guys? No. Okay, George. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a an item number five, which I wanted to is, is being deferred. Yes, sir. They requested uh, a deferral. Let's go ahead and take care of that. The the applicant is is um, in negotiation with an adjacent property owner over an issue associated with the development and has asked that this be postponed until your meeting of July 14th. So okay. um, that would typically require um, a motion and action on your part to uh, postpone to a date certain. Okay. Uh, can I, do I have a motion to postpone? I so move. Second. Item number five. That's uh, RP. 16-003. That's correct. Uh, to defer uh, until the meeting of uh, July 14th. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have a second. second. I have a second. Any discussion on it? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Item number three. Site plan S116-003. A site plan for 12 apartments and uh, three separate fourplex buildings. Uh, George? Actually, oh, Frank. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Frank, all right. I didn't see you standing there. <laughs> I'm shorter. <laughs> I, was, I was reading. I was reading. Good morning. So today this project is Mr. Brown. We all know Mr. Fred Brown, Fred Brown Enterprises. Uh, it's a existing site, very flat, off of Willow Creek Road. You can see a location map here on this, on this screen. The, uh, the apartment complex we're talking about later is over here and existing commerce park here and existing house and office location on the site now. The access for the project is through an existing road, so no new roads need to be built that leads right out to Willow Creek Road. Again, the project is... Willow Lake Road. Excuse me, Willow Lake Road. Thank you. The project is, let me zoom in a little bit, all about these three buildings here, new one, second one, and the third one, for 12 new apartments. The parking on site is adequate that they've laid out. The utilities are there, traffic, public works, everybody has looked at this and found that the project is very feasible, very doable. The one nice amenity as an apartment liver myself will be some of these storage units over here on the left hand side will be associated with each apartment unit. So they're not for public rental, they're for the people, the tenants in the apartment complex. It's a nice amenity to have. So other than that, um, one, not to confuse the process that George just went over, but earlier this month, the water staff, water committee staff presented sort of like a preliminary meeting to the water issues committee just to let them know what was coming to look at, kind of to, to go over the process that George just went over with you. And while they were there looking at this project, they actually made a recommendation that day uh, to, a, to make a recommendation in favor of the project to the city council. So that one jumped the gun a little bit, but it was there and they got went ahead and did it. So other than that, if you have any questions, I don't see Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown's not here. I was expecting him, but it's uh, certainly from staff perspective, a very doable project. George, we've seen this site twice before. Once when they were doing the, uh, the office complex and this was a holdout. That's correct. Yes, sir. And then once again, when he came back and I think we did, we can approve an office use or something. In, it was actually, there's a, a, an additional building adjacent to the main house that's there. That was right, approved at right, that time. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> is there any problem with access? No, sir. This is going to work okay? That'll that work okay. The, the only part that's not, quote, wide enough is right where that existing building is. Right there. And it's not about the right of way width, it's, this, it's how they, it's not about the roadway width, but the right of way width for additional cars, but you can't move the building. Right. And 
the installation of utility lines in that road, the Public Works Department said that when situations like this, when there's obvious, there's no way we're going to make them move the whole building back three feet, <laughs> three or four feet, uh, that they found it acceptable. Commissioners, any questions? I have a couple questions. Jerry? Uh, Frank, can you point out the handicapped spaces yes, for sir. me? And if the project meets code as far as handicap? It does meet code for handicapped spaces. The two are right here in front of the middle and third building with the striped area in the middle being kept open for van accessible. Now you had mentioned, is there other parking being shared that would share those handicapped spaces? No, sir. Those handicapped spaces are, are for the apartments. They're the requirement for the apartments. Okay. Then how about um, the dumpster access? The dumpster access... To find it. Over on the right hand side. Thank you. A straight in shot from the road and then backing out, turning around at a three point turn into the drive and then pulling back out. I have one more question about the parking spaces. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I saw some place that are like 19 by 9 6. Does that meet our code as well? 19 by 9 are our code requirements. 19. Yes, sir. Okay. And then there's a handicap space for the office use over on the, <laughs> where the existing office already is. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. And, and fire access is okay, and I guess they use the turnaround would be like a hammerhead. Correct. The, the fire access turnaround reviewed by Don Devendorf, our fire marshal. Uh, the fire truck comes in and would actually use this area where the parking is and then backing into where the storage units are. That's wide enough right. for them and then pulling out yeah, that it way. It looks like a good hammerhead. It is. Commissioners, any other questions? I, I have one. Um, the access to this property off of Willow Lake Road, is that private? Is that public? Yes. That will never be public? That's, I don't believe so. I think it's going to stay private. So yes. we would look at this whole project the piece we're looking at today, plus what's already there, is ending up having to be one project that really couldn't be split up in the future? No, this is done. <laughs> this is what it is. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, anybody in the audience want to speak to this project? No? I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't have any problems with it. Anybody? Commissioners? Recommending uh, we, we go ahead and vote on this like a normal, okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Move to recommend approval of site plan SI 16-003 for 12 apartments in three fourplex buildings. I'll second that. Do we have to put that in any terms like to forward to the city council? I believe that's out of feasibility approval or anything like that? No, I think no. that's okay. Good. All right. Any more discussion? I have a motion to second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Let's move to item four. It's uh, SI 16-005. Yes, sir. This project is... Excuse me? Yes, yes sir. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I have a conflict of interest on this. One of my relatives is in the financing portion of uh, this particular project, so I'd like to be recused from discussion and or vote. Okay. It's your choice. Um, site plan for 12 residential units in six separate duplex buildings. Correct, sir. This is a Frank? Rec commonly referred to as the Robinson duplexes, Robinson Drive. As you know, the Robinson Drive is off of um, East Gurley. Turn right, go up Robinson Drive, and it's on the right-hand side. As you can see on the location map, it's contiguous to SF35 zoning and many multifamily uh, type zoning projects. The site is relatively simple. Two entrances. The first entrance leads to four duplexes with associated parking and the 
the um, spaces for uh, guest parking. The other entrance leads to all the other buildings, each one having their own parking in their driveways. The turnarounds, you have a fire department uh, length here that's likely acceptable. They're still talking about this backing distance for the fire truck, maybe needing a little bit more of a turnaround at the end for building six, but that distance um, is still in negotiation. It's not a deal killer. It's 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 up to the fire department and the developer to work that out. And other than that, it's a pretty basic project. It's on a steep slope. It, it's well below the density that would be allowed for the multifamily medium zoning for this parcel size. And it has been reviewed again by staff, starting with pre-application conference and then through a technical review by Public Works, Fire, myself, George, all of us and believe it's a very feasible project. Well, I think if this was a regular site plan review we were doing on this thing, I'd have a lot of problems with it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how realistic it is to put, to turn 80-foot buildings into a 20% slope, uh, uh, perpendicular to a 20% mm -hmm. slope. I mean, at 10% at is, what's a fire department require? 10% grade? Maximum driveway? I think it's 12. Didn't it change mm -hmm. to 10, George? I'm not sure, sir. Okay. Well, let's say it's 12. So from here to here, it's 150 feet. That would get you up about 18 feet. And from here to here is 60 feet drop. So you're going to have a huge retaining wall in the back here and a, and a, and a lot of grading. And I don't know how you're going to deal with parking bays that are at a 12% slope trying to get access into the units. I don't see any sidewalks or well, stairwells or any way to do that, but I, I suppose you could make it work. I know the one next door is very similar, but it's not the same slope. It's Well, I guess it's, it is, but it's a lot shorter distance. And again, they have a, a big retaining wall in the back, but this one's going to be a monster to make this work. But if you're just asking us for, can you get that many units on the site and that many parking spaces? <laughs> and, so. You know, it is. yeah, I guess you can. You could do, you could do build anything. Much of your comments, you're, you're, you're correct, and all that. I share the same interest in the project, but those things come out in the civil plan design, which is where the uh, full civils with the grading, the drainage, the infrastructure, all that comes out in the civil plans when it comes back for building permits. Okay. Like I say, it, we're, it got to get into my head. We got to look at these differently. Yeah, you know. Right, mm -hmm. Joe. Well, I, I think you know, cross section, typical cross section, would be very beneficial. Yes. Because you know, say the intent of this is so that they don't spend many thousands of dollars on plans to have them rejected, and we don't really have enough information on the grading to say yay or nay. So, if you know. And perhaps, uh, perhaps this is one that we delay and look at after there's a little bit more information, just to uh, have that opportunity. Because you know, if they spend a hundred thousand dollars on plans, and then we say, no, it's not going to fly, we've defeated the purpose. Well, I mean, I agree. I'd I'd love to see a site, se uh, site section cut through here, and also a preliminary grading plan to show how they're going to deal with that huge cut in the back or the, or the retaining walls, but uh, do we, ha are we in a position to want to require that at this point? You, your charter allows you at any time to defer action on an item and request additional information. So even with these processes, even though it's something new for you, all of your ability to defer action pending additional information remains in effect. So yes, you could ask to defer this to a future meeting and specify what type of additional information you would like from us and we can make sure that that is given to you in advance. But what are we going to gain by that? I mean all we're doing is playing with the design. We're, if, if you're asking us can you get that many units and parking spaces on that site and, and does it is satisfy the fire department and, and traffic and access but, but keep yeah, in mind, you know. keep in mind the, the second part of that is it's feasibility first, but the second part of it is also compatibility. Yeah. 
Again, and, council's interested in yeah. whether this project would be compatible with adjacent properties as well as whether it's technically feasible. I got, I got a concern Jerry? about if there are going to be any on site drainage and where's the yes. drainage go? Yes. Again, drainage design is something that probably wouldn't occur at this level anyway, other than very preliminary information which is shown across the front of the property. It, it's shown along the front uh, adjacent to Robinson Drive. But again, that's the kind of thing that requires uh, significant engineering and, and at this stage in the process um, that would be a considerable cost for the developer. I share a lot of the same uh, comments that uh, Tom brought up. I don't know where we go from here to say yay or nay. Well, uh, I, you know, I think delaying it to get some of these questions answered. If you zoom in on building one, you know, the, the two, it's divided into two pieces, and there's uh, five and a half feet um, of uh, yeah. elevation change on the finished floor. And, you know, there's, but there's just a little planter. I mean, how are you going to accommodate cars parking in front of that with a five and a half foot change in floor elevation. The Maybe developers are here, so if you want to ask them. Um, one and two. One and two are? Yeah. Well, they're definitely the neighborhood is, I mean, there's similar projects mm -hmm. along the street. The yeah. one next door is sim very similar. Very similar. You know, I have, a, I have another con question. Uh, and. I know this is all confusing for all of us because it's the first time we've done this type of thing, and I'm sure we'll, we'll work some of the bugs out. But I'm hopeful that if we were to vote on this and if it were to pass, that the water allocation board is that water the well the city council for the water uh, committee would, yes would at least hear the cautions or concerns that we had, so that they didn't just think that we were willingly accepting everything about this hopefully you, they might hear some of the cautions that well, they're here. sitting over there to, <laughs> well i don't know yeah. the people but um my my concern is i wouldn't want to be leaving this apartment complex on a on a, on a drizzly 30 degree day uh that i'd be bob sledding right down that driveway wouldn't i with that that slope yeah, that's all over prescott <laughs> i've seen driveways like that everywhere. Oh, I, I've, I've had a couple myself but this is this is it doesn't have a landing area. The ones I've seen where it does get steep, there is yeah. a, also mm -hmm. a flattened out spot. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, it's blind coming on. I'd like to see traffic's comments about this because it's almost, it could be blind coming out to Robinson Drive. But my the, concern is probably the exits along with. They didn't have any uh, negative comments on traffic engineering on this. Wow. Okay. Was... Interesting. Well, like I said, from a feasibility standpoint, you know, uh, sure they got to do a, a a lot more sophistication on the, oh, on the design to make it work. Even there's a lot of work to make left it work. But, right. You know. but it, I'd yeah. like to hear from the developer. Okay, can we have speak to the developer? Can you want to explain your? Yeah. yeah. Kind of explain your process and, and your idea on, on yeah. uh, a design for this if project? You would go, if you would look at the project just before it, if you just can scroll down on that map, the one that we did at 340 Robinson is a similar project. Same style, there's uh, two nine foot walls that took up 18, 19 foot of elevation change. Okay. It, it is 12% grade is what we've been told for the driveway. Right. In doing that project, we, we do have a little bit of modification in terms of the style of this particular building. Uh, you come up that driveway at 12%. There, then when you turn on building one, looking at the site that we propose now, it's actually a duplex. That building one is a un two units. So the lower unit, instead of doing it like we did on 340 Robinson, as you come up that 12% driveway, then you'll turn and drive up a, probably a, we'll pick up five feet as you come up into that garage and there'll be a, we'll, it's going to be a two-story unit instead of a one-level unit. So you'll pull in a garage underneath and then you'll walk up to the unit. So the elevation change that you'll pick up there is nine feet. So there's a garage under this one now? There will be. Ah. I haven't shown the building design there because we're just wa waiting to see if we can get water before we go ahead and have our buildings drawn. But where you turn and go into that first unit, you drive into a garage that would be underneath the unit and then the unit will be split level so I'll take up about nine foot if I do a nine foot seating in my garage so my slopes I realize what you're talking about next door like well, I say I look I at it you know it's one thing but now what you're saying is something different right 
And those walls, the retaining walls we put in, we would have much preferred not to have to do that, but in previous council on the above us, we would have liked to access from the road above, but there's a five foot non-vehicular access that was approved in that plat, which prohibits, if I had Steve Oritz look at it quite a bit to try and see if we could access from the top, it's impossible to get that easement uh, taken away at this point. So we're stuck with but the access that we have. Cut. You can start a cut down well, it would be to easier to and then retain, right? Yeah, we have a there's three nine foot walls right there, which takes up 27 feet. Ah, okay. Uh, okay it's so a big it, it's a big yeah. cut that we have to do. Like I say, next door we did 19 feet, uh, so it was a lot a lot to move. But we've modified the site a little bit by putting the garages underneath the units. Those two buildings okay. on the top will be the same. You'll drive into the garage. The units will be above them. That helps a lot because I had a concern about that parking. Yeah, uh, on a, on a it, it, it wouldn't be. So the 12 percent is going to be coming up the drives. There'll be about a three to five percent grade going into the garage, and then you pick up nine foot to the unit above it. Okay. So I got you. We've we've done a lot of the preliminary dirt work to make sure it's even feasible before we presented it. So a lot of that's done. We just didn't submit that. I didn't think it was necessary at this point, but maybe well, like the I said, at, will help. At this point, it's it, you know it's more like a feasibility study. That's that's what I'm trying to get straight. That's in correct. Head here, and you had you probably learned a lot on that first project. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> but you still didn't turn those buildings parallel with the slope, did you? Well, it, there's okay. really no other way. We've we've played with this site for 20 years. <laughs> Vincent and I have had this forever. Okay. And uh, we started out down the street with neighbors opposing apartments. We built a couple of houses to try and appease the neighbors. We moved to the duplexes, and it's a tough site. Okay. So we've just done what we can do to make it work. Any questions? Um, well, I think if the, you know, with the indication we'll look long and hard at the rating, we review this again later, right? I'm sorry. We no, we don't review it again. No, sir, okay. you don't. That would go. Staff. Er, yeah. If they're if they're able to get water allocation, then it would come back for the building permit process. Okay. Because they have the proper zoning, so correct. We, we wouldn't see it. Well, again. I mean, I think it. It fits with the neighborhood. Well, I mean, that's yeah, I mean, it's compatible. I don't have a problem with the neighbor. So compatibility, no. and you know, three nine-foot tall walls. If they can make it work, to, you know, who am I to say? <laughs> if if you look at the project, the four units down by the street, mm -hmm. it's just an economic decision. I'd have had to put two nine-foot walls, just like I did next door, to make those four units work. Sure. Adding one more wall and moving it up the hill was just a matter of economics can I get two more buildings with another nine foot wall yeah. uh, I would rut uh, like anyone it would be nice if it's flat it's not so that's just the best way we can we can get that type of a density and have it feasible my question is then do we have to see this again or we don't no. get to see it again? no we won't so whatever we decide today moves all, it along all we're council. all we're saying to the council is this project compatible with the general plan and the neighborhood and is it feasible to get that many units in parking on there and, it, and the fire department's already looked at it traffic's looked at it you know uh, I don't see how we can and I don't I don't know if there be landscaping requirements but you know 27 feet of retaining wall there will be there'll be some landscaping requirements between the multi-family zoning and the single family 35 zoning for residential protection standards as far as the drainage, I can tell you that, that Haywood, Bill Carnes has done those detention ponds to make sure they're adequate for the drainage on the site and they're sized somewhat appropriately. There'll be some more engineering done there, but just like we did on 340 Robinson, those detention ponds will be adequate for on-site drainage and detention and release. Okay. Anybody in the audience else like to say, oh, you know, I didn't get your name and address? Steve Perry. My name's Steve Perry. My address is 3131 Pamela Street. Good. Okay. All right, Steve, thank you. Anybody else in the audience? All right. Uh, commissioners, like you said, it's more of a feasibility approval. I'll entertain a motion. Nope. I'll make a motion. Move to recommend approval of site plan SI 16-005 for the Robinson duplexes. I have a second. I'll second. Okay, motion second. Any discussion? Um, I'm going to vote for this. Boy, I got some cautions about it. <laughs> I know. I'd like to 
the, the slope is certainly the issue, and I'd like to make sure that when this moves forward, the, the, the issues about slope are brought to the water board and the council. Yes, sir. I think they've heard it. I know. <laughs> 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 okay, any other comments? No? I have a motion and a second to approve, right, George? You made the motion? Yeah, motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay. Two. Got one opposed. Two, Two opposed. opposed. Two opposed. All right. <sighs> Let's move to item number six then. Oh, you're right. He's visiting. Okay, we're ready. We're ready for you. He's out there glad handing. Son of a. Now. Okay. Thank you. Why did that just increase the value of the property? <laughs> <laughs> okay, item number six. We have a SI 16-002 site plan for a 200-unit phased multifamily apartment complex. Frank? Yes, sir. Again, this is off of Willow Lake Road. If you remember Mr. Brown project, which is right here. This is the uh, Dells View Mobile Home Park currently. And of course the roundabout for 89 is straight out uh, Willow Lake Road. The Beth, uh, Temple Breath Shalom Synagogue is right at the end of Broner Way. And the whole project is right here. Base of school to the south. The base of school property anyway to the south. As noted in your agenda, it is a 200 unit multifamily apartment project in several buildings, I think six buildings. The entrance is on Broner Way. Utilities are shown. The uh, parking is all adequate to meet the site design. The single access out to Broner Way is acceptable because the apartment complex is at 200 units. Above 200 units, they would need a secondary access for fire but they don't, they're down to 200 units. Uh, the traffic, there, has, there was a preliminary request for a traffic study uh, from the Public Works Department when they were first proposing an entrance out directly to Willow Lake Road. When that entrance was moved to Broner Way, which would lead traffic to the stop sign, uh, the traffic engineer told me that they're not gonna request a traffic study at this point, that that was adequate. The, um, I did meet with some people from the synagogue who were concerned about the development right next to them. They were concerned about the property line. They had their own survey done and confirmed that the property line shown on this site plan and theirs is the same. Uh, their, only, their main request was to move a dumpster location from the property line on their property to another location. The applicant has done that. Appreciate that cooperation. And the center of the whole project has a community building for recreational amenities, uh, basketball court, clubhouse, and the like. Landscaping along the perimeter, but mostly interior to the project. And they are well parked for this project. They actually exceed our code requirements for parking. The project itself that's currently there, the, the, the mobile home park, is not connected to utilities and they actually have some failing septic systems and things like that in there. It's kind of a, kind of a mess. <laughs> this would be a nice improvement mm. to that site. Is there any questions? I know the developers are here. Oh, I'm sorry, question. I meant to um, mention the phasing. They will be phasing this project uh, over time. Um, a lot of that dependent on the quantity of water allocation that they get. Um, but they're looking at phasing each building front to back. And if you'll scroll that down a little bit, there is a section through the site. Um, as a general comment, one of the reasons I voted against the other one is you know, without a section through it, it's very hard to understand what's. Oh, you're going looking on. up here? Oh. No, down. Down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
like I said, I've got a larger drawing perhaps than some of the others have, but it does show. Section helps. Yeah, a lot. It, it shows how the how it's being handled and mm -hmm. that the drive, the parking is uh, relatively level. And anyway, it and it shows the overall height. It's a nice exhibit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, and from my perspective, on the hillside sites. If you have a flat side, I can see doing without it at this stage. If you got a hillside, I'd sure like to see some sections. Good. And again, um, looking at the site, visiting it, um, I think it fits in the neighborhood well. I mean, I don't think there's a problem with the, And it's nice that they worked it out with the people to the, to the east you know, and address their concerns. That's that's always beneficial when they talk to the neighbors. Yes, sir. Thanks. I've also visited the site, and uh, I think as far as the standard of feasibility and compatibility, that uh, certainly uh, fits. And my biggest concern is traffic. Yes. Um, we're talking about 330 bedrooms with. Uh, probably somewhere around 1,500, uh, maybe even larger number of trips per day on dumping right into uh, Willow Lake Road. Um, and if you're going to allow left turns onto that uh, road, you're talking about a big problem there. Uh, right turn only, of course, I'm not a traffic engineer, but uh, I did contact the traffic department to try to get some volume information. I didn't get a response, uh, but my guesstimate would be that uh, this might impact maybe 30 to 40 percent of the current volume so that's a pretty big issue and uh, i think it needs to be planned for and you were saying that uh, it met the standards by <coughs> one unit before a traffic study would be required um well no it wasn't the the second entrance would kick in at 201 units for the fire department but then that second entrance would have been right on willow lake road the Traffic study, uh, from what I, my conversation with the traffic engineer was, because the entrance now leads to Broner Way, which then leads to a stop sign, that's what negated the need for the traffic study. Well, still having that uh, traffic turn left on Willow Lake with that many uh, trips and uh, that close to the roundabout, I, I just see some real uh, traffic conflict there. Well, I agree. I feel like I, I have a problem with it. I'm sure with the traffic too. Although I think overall, I think it's a it's a good spot for apartments. I think it's a great spot for apartments. It's it seems to be a perfect project for that location. Uh, my biggest concern was also the traffic and the single entrance. But you've you've explained that you don't need. Correct. To, they can live with a single entrance if they with 200 units. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Here we go again. I. I got to rely on the traffic engineer, you know? I mean, he's on the staff, he's the expert, I'm not. If he says it's it, it'll work, I that's where I got to lay my uh, my uh, my belief. So, I mean, I think it's good to question it cuz I question it too. But George? Yeah, uh would you put the, the schematic up there that showed the base of school? Right. Well, the base of school sits out on Prescott Lakes Parkway on the far left side, but the owners of that, it was 15 acres, um, they wouldn't split the property. I think the school only needed like seven acres or something like that. And so the school always looked at the eastern portion over there by this project as something they would want to be able to unload at some point because they didn't ever see a use of their own and that was always viewed by the Prescott Lakes as uh, a possible multifamily and res residential even though it was in the commercial it was looked at as being apartments well now with we there is no access to that backside of base of school property except through the school parking lot and it would be useful if this project would provide on the on the east side of the of this project some kind of connectivity into that base of school property because you know unless unless there's some access planned ahead of time 
then we're going to keep boxing in even, even the parcel where it says multi-family medium down there which is not based to school that has no access into that either uh, now and and so uh, you know maybe traffic looked at this but they looked at it and kind of compartmentalized it as a project by itself that has no impact or a future capabilities for for the adjacent properties and and um, we really need to look into some connectivity into the backside of basis. Now I don't know if you can connect on the Bronner Way past the the, the Jewish uh, Temple on on that way. If there's some access that way too, uh, that that can be had rather than having to utilize any of the property of this project. Uh, but I'd like to see that more in terms of how that overall connectivity is going to work. Well, it, would it really be the responsibility, though, of this developer to provide access for the base of school property? Well, I'm, I mean, you, you know, out. we don't allow county islands, you know, and, and things no. like that. And this is, what, what, would you allow islands within our own city, you know, to where you can have properties that's just blocked out that you can't get to anyway? The base of school owns that. Already. The base of school owns that. That's correct. And then uh, the Prescott Lakes, that's owned by another uh, developer, uh, the more multi-family medium. But there's no way to get to that property from that wait, end, wait, wait. from the east end either. You're getting lost. Yeah. When you when you mention that where the base of school is, they're using approximately seven acres of the 14 acres that they've got. That's their privilege as a property owner. If they didn't want to subdivide it, that's a property owner's uh, decision. That's kind of what I was saying. Uh, now, if we look at it and say, gee, you got a great piece of property there that could be another so many units, or it could be uh, multi, uh, <coughs> it's got a BG zoning, so you could have some kind of office retail. Uh, that's a decision that a developer's got to make as to whether he wants to have the ownership of that total parcel in one property owner or whether he wants to subdivide it. Now, if he comes in for subdivision, I'm sure that all of the access problems are going to have to be dealt with because you subdivide it, and all of a sudden you're talking about <coughs> better use and more activity there. So I'm, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because they haven't asked for a subdivision requirement. Well, I, I agree. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves, but isn't that why we have a city traffic engineer is to look beyond just some little compartmentalized project and talk about the future uh, access to different kind of areas? Well, George, I, I don't disagree with you, but how does anybody know that the base of school doesn't want to own that parcel? Well, I mean, they, we knew that from the very beginning. They didn't want to buy that. And have they requested access? Well, at well, one time... Well, maybe I'm getting off subject here. I think I am, yeah. but but there was a realtor looking at combining the two parcels together. The base was got, was looking at being part of this department project, but I don't know if if they, there's been any recent discussion on that. But but uh, one of the realtors in town I know was talking about combining that. And do we have the developer for this property here? Yes, sir. And I don't know if they're. So I did. Ian did look at all the impacts of traffic. I mean, he I know him. He he's very good, and he looked at this project, and he's satisfied that this will work. I don't know that the base of school forcing this developer to put a road into. Mm. Well, they um, haven't even requested. No, it's not even on the so radar. Yeah, I I don't know if we can allow for every contingency. <laughs> You, but, you, uh, you know, open meeting law requires you to follow what's on the agenda, and you probably at this point are late, way too far afield oh, okay. to having that discussion. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, uh, uh, why Tom, and as far, as far as full disclosure, I sit on the basis school advisory council, so uh, I don't think I have a conflict here, but I think I need to make it known. Okay. Mr. Chairman. I, yes, sir. I go back to the second access. I know it has to be a cutoff someplace. Yes. But we're talking about one unit to keep us from having a second access. I, I think for but good planning, but pardon? That's, but that's the rule. Can we break the rule? No. <laughs> he says we can. I, um, yeah. For me, the obviously, you know, it's dumping a lot more cars onto 
uh, Willow Lake Road. But at the same time, um, I think it's better to dump pretty much directly on the Willow Creek than if it were, say, a mile, half mile back from a major road where now they have to go through a, another neighborhood and sure. do all that. So, I mean, I direct agree. access to Willow Creek, I think, is a benefit if you're going to have that many cars. Well, like I say, I'm concerned about it, too, but I'm going to rely on the staffs, on, the, on our traffic engineer. Let's hear yeah. from the developer. And, and, so. and if there were a second access, it would undoubtedly, well, you know, might end up being the Willow Creek also. And or Willow Lake. Uh, Willow Willow Lake. Willow Lake. Can, we, yeah. can we hear from the developer? Get your opinion on some things? Good morning. Yeah, my name is Rick Nestor. Address? And, uh, I'm in San Diego, 6170 Caminito Plata in San Diego. Okay. So, what's your concept here? What I mean, you guys, well, you guys <coughs> certainly started from with a blank piece of ground here and <laughs> thought, yeah, it through, we did. thought it through from the beginning. And why uh, don't you give us explain what uh, you guys were thinking here? Well, um, as far as the egress, ingress, and egress from the property, initially we did have it going on to Willow Lake, and um, the visibility going to the I believe it's to the west was limited uh, as you come up. So then we decided we talked to traffic, and by coming out on Broner Way. You come right in the apex of that turn, and you can see clearly uh, both, both directions. Uh, there's no uh, sight limitations uh, on that stop sign at all. So, uh, you know, uh, we feel it's going to impact, but it's not going to be significant. Um, we had talked about uh, access to the property uh, just behind us, the uh, charter school property, and. Uh, we had actually called them up because we realized that that's a nice parcel. Mm -hmm. And they said that they might turn it into some sort of equestrian, you know, field or, you know, just a bunch of uh, hiking trails or whatnot or, you know, whatever. So they were pretty short with us and we decided, well, we'd just continue on at that point. We did notice, and uh, I have my civil engineer here, that there is some sort of uh, access, ingress and egress on the back corner of the property. It's a 25 foot wide. I don't really quite know exactly where that goes, but he can address that. If you can see it in the bottom right hand corner, mm -hmm. uh, there is some sort of a government or city easement there. Um, and we had thought about you know, utilizing that as our second source if we needed, but uh, this, line? pardon me? Isn't that utility lines there? I think it says right on it, ingress and egress. Uh, so I don't know. I don't. It doesn't show a utility. It says ingress, egress. Yeah. I can't read the small print. It says ingress, egress, but it really doesn't go anywhere. It goes to the, the temple. Is it a dedicated egress? Well, I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, uh, well, I have uh, my civil engineer here. Like yeah, I think that. Jason Giese told us at one time there is that access road along there. Right now, one of those trailers off their boat there, but there is a kind of a road along there that comes out on the other side of the temple. So I'll respond. Uh, You're going to need a name, name and address. I'm sorry. David Benner, 1981. Okay. Commerce Center Circle. What do you think? Sweet tea. Um, just a few things. Uh, some background information. We have been working on the site plan development on this project for a number of months, and we have thought through a lot of these issues that you're bringing up here. Okay. Um, regarding traffic, um, the average or the weekday peak hour is actually indicated on the engineering data, and based on this use and the peak AM and the peak PM are both just over 100 trips. Uh, and so that equates to, you know, about a couple trips a minute, roughly. And so the, uh, uh, we have looked at the warrants for turn lanes. Uh, this is clearly um, not within the warrant, uh, although we are showing uh, the turn lanes. That is indicated on the plan as well. Uh, we show a left turn lane uh, right through that 
um, the apex of that curve. It is joined with Broner Way. The, uh, there is no issue as far as traffic um, that will not be addressed. One thing I can say is that uh, being local to this area with our office, we're just right around the corner. Um, the traffic on not Willow Lake Road, but Prescott Lakes Parkway is a major issue with the school. There's already been at least two or three accidents, and it's pretty mind-boggling why that wasn't addressed. Uh, you know, an, a new school, how it could be so dysfunctional um, traffic-wise. It's a great school and uh, you know, great uh, neighbor. We do indicate on the bottom left of the plan possible future access to basic school. So it's not a requirement. We do show it, and to it, to your point, uh, Mr. Menzer, there is no obligation here whatsoever if they want to split it. Uh, that's certainly their, you know, that's their responsibility. It's not our problem. The access easement that is shown on the bottom right, that is essentially a, it's not a public, it's a, it's a, it, it's an access to 89, and it specifically states that in the easement. And it's, it names this property and a handful of other properties that are in this area and that was created as I understand based on the original plan or alignment of Willow Lake Road to 89 which is now not there anymore so the intent was to create another 25 feet on the south side of that I believe so it's certainly there it specifically names access to 89 which we know that's not going to happen uh, 89 or uh, ADOT's not going to allow that so that is not a viable option it's there and Technically, it, it, it's it's kind of an obsolete easement, but it still appears Could on title. Could you explain that statement a little further that ADOT will not allow? It's pretty unlikely that ADOT would allow access to 89 just south of that roundabout. They have major issues with access to their highways, as I'm sure you know. Um, that would be just a couple hundred feet south of an existing roundabout. And it's just not feasible or practical to expect them to allow access. To 89 even though there's an access easement to 89 correct I, again my understanding of that <laughs> is that was created based on the original alignment of that intersection well which isn't there anymore and 25 well, we've all lived with easements that were created for a different reason than, correct than we have today I just I'm just putting it out there as far as what it is uh, what's Mr. that easement just south of that access that is a utility easement it's that for is. it's for a reclaimed water line okay thank you um, excuse me I've got a question for you it looks and I didn't I didn't understand this when I drove out there you're you're right the visibility is quite good at that intersection but it looks are you widening Broner way to like double what it is now and adding that right turn lane and um, off of Willow Lake and then also making it a left <laughs> lane and a, excuse me left turn lane and a right turn lane as part of your project that's correct mr gardner if you look at the plan the existing pavement is indicated by the the tick marks the um, hatch you can sort of see what the widening is beyond the existing pavement line so we're adding essentially a a right turn on willow lake road and we're adding essentially three lanes or two lanes rather on Broner Way, so we have two egress lanes, one for the left turn, one for the right turn, and then one for the for the entry. So this has been thought out and coordinated with the traffic engineer, and uh, it will function. It will function great. Uh, there's great sight distance, and uh, no concerns. We're happy with it. So is the city traffic engineer. Okay, commissioners. Any other questions for the developer? Um, you, there was a comment mentioned about doing this in phases. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your picture of that? Well, depending on the water allocation, uh, we probably won't be uh, starting this project for at least uh, another six to eight months. So, and it's going to take us 18 months to 24 to complete. So, depending on the allocations throughout the process, uh, we're going to build as many units as we can in phase one and then stop and, and then wait till we get more water either we get water credits or we get allocations so your anticipation is you're not going to get 
sufficient water allocation for 200 units. We're hoping and that, that would cause a, a correct. A We're hoping you, from, a, from a developer standpoint, it's much more cost effective to build the units out right. rather than coming, uh, bring sending our crews away and bring them all back right. in. So we're going to try and work with the city and you know get the water credits, either buy the water credits or have it allocated to, uh, to us throughout the process. But you know, to, for plan check, we're going to have to phase this because we don't have enough water to supply the units. I can expand on that, Mr. Mabrak. Thank you. The, uh, there is not enough water in the city's portfolio to allocate for the entire project with one approval. That's the bottom line. The the what we've done is we've shown phase two, which is essentially that represents what would be available uh, next year. Next time. This year, the city only has enough to give uh, uh, about 20 acre feet, roughly. Actually, quite a bit more than that. But no one project can take more than 50 percent. So that's basically what's creating this phase line here. Gotcha. So again, as as uh, as Rick pointed out, the phasing can sort of be whatever it is uh, it, in, in order to get the availability from the city. And if, so phase one currently represents what is currently available. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not a phasing because of financing or... No. And, and what would you put, what improvements would you be putting in in phase one? Well, probably all the street improvements. We'll be doing the entire front of the project leaving the back two units as phase two. Okay. okay. And that's how many units? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's, I, uh, I assume you meant back two buildings. Yeah. Yeah, the back two buildings, I believe, it's are... A, how many units are those? Um, three. 33. I can't read. 200. 67. There you no, go. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> About two-thirds, yeah. one-third. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, well, one I came up with 60 units. And, and will this be a, a, a regular street rent apartment uh, market rent yes. project? Yes, it'll be market rents. It's, it's going to be a HUD project. Uh, we have all of our funding in place right now. Uh, we're just trying to figure out, you know, we got thrown a curve on this secondary uh, egress yeah. uh, about a week ago. You know, so we're trying to, you know, work around that. You know, we scratched our heads to find out if we could get another access point to the project. And then we decided at this point we would just cut it down to the 200 and go with one uh, one access. Thank you very much. Okay, thank and, you. And just to add to that, you know, there is flexibility here uh, in phase two. So we can certainly look at that. Right now we're just trying to get a phase one approval, basically. So right. uh, there is time, at, you know, to look at, at a secondary access and add additional units. And, and uh, sorry to come back into here, but and does HUD do that now where you can have uh, phased projects? I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, they certainly should. They certainly should in Prescott based on the water availability. HUD um, is federal, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, despite what we think they should do, uh, they have their own, mental <laughs> their own mentality. Uh, I've had experience with, with the, we tried to phase some projects before and they just, they gave us a hard time years ago. It would right, be right, different right. today, hopefully. I think they understand the sensitivity that's going on in Prescott. All right, commissioners, any questions of the developer? No? No. No? Okay, thanks, guys. Any discussion? All right, audience, anybody out there like to speak to this project? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Mike Wolf. I'm the president of uh, Temple Rich Shalom. Okay, I need an address, Mike. I'm, I'm about to give it to you. 2094 Forest Hills, Prescott. Okay. And? And I'm Jim Rubin. I'm at 1612 Addington Drive, right across the street. Um, there's a couple of things that, uh, that we think that we'd like to have you consider. Uh, we'd like to have no parking signs on Broner Lane. It's a very top priority for us. Uh, our congregants are, are older, and uh, uh, Broner Way is, uh, is not as wide 24, feet. 24 feet wide, so having no parking signs there would certainly benefit our entrance into our temple area. So we'd like you to consider mm -hmm. that. Sounds like reasonable request, staff, right? Take note of that. 
What else we got? And well, I was in agreement with you folks about the traffic. Uh, because you know, somebody mentioned the 1,800 trips, another mentioned a couple hundred trips. Our busy time is usually Friday through Sunday, and we have a, a developer on the in, the in the temple, and he was suggesting a right turn lane, a left turn lane, and two lanes in the center, so you can come and go one way or another to alleviate the traffic. Which apparently the developer has agreed to do. Right, that's what's there now. And that's that's something that's really important to us too. Good. Um, other than talking to the developer ourselves about some things we'd like in in his uh, property because it's adjacent to ours, I don't think we have anything else. No, it's just well, I had one issue, but that was with parking spaces, and you you folks think that it's adequate. I just from the past I always felt that it with with one bedroom units you might have two people living in it. There's two parking places. And there's 90 units, so that that might be, if it worst comes to worst, then that's 180 parking spaces out of the three out of the 335 or whatever they're. No, well at. they started at, at th yes. over 300. Yeah, 360. But bucks. but they're 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 not really. A problem to our property because their property is pretty much uh, uh, closed in. So they, I mean, if they have any parking problems, they're going to have parking problems within the development. Well, it's just that's I true. Did, we didn't want it to spill out onto Bronner Way, which is only 24 feet, and you know, to have cars coming and going, it's going to create a problem with us one way or another, mm -hmm. or with the people coming into the development. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with them. On 24 foot street, you don't want parking on it. No. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? No. Or overflow. The street is sure. wider now with this plan. So, yes. yes sir, I, I met with the um, temple, with Mr. Um, Rubin, and I had already sent a request to the Public Works Department about putting no parking signs up okay. on Bronner Way. Good. And there, it is only 24 feet. We wouldn't allow that anyway. Okay. The signs just aren't there. So there's, there's no parking signs will probably go up long before this project even starts. Right. So that's going to yeah. happen separate from... And actually, right. the, the way they come into the apartment complex, they don't even go by the temple. Right. No. So they're going directly into the complex. So it's, it, it, it's not a problem for us at this point. We don't, we don't see any issues. We appreciate what the developer has done to make this, uh, this area, which has been a mobile home park, and it looks, it's in terrible disrepair, mm -hmm. to enhance the property, mm -hmm. and it'll just make it better for us. We appreciate it. Okay, guys, thanks for coming. Thank you. Any questions of the... Okay. So basically what we're going to have, other than the real estate portion, is a social problem of what do you do with those, how many units are in the trailer park that you're going to do away with? Well, they've been in the process of that for years, well, getting that's, rid of them. That's yeah, it's about, problem. I think, 18. I think yeah. they count about uh, 18. I know, I, I looked at this project. Probably four times over the past ten years, uh, with the mobile home park being in there, it's a great piece of property. It it's a good, good spot, and everybody that we worked with said, "How long is it going to take to clear the field before you can do anything?" So I commend you for being able to get this thing done. Okay, commissioners, any further questions, comments? No, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Oops. If you'll give me the uh, my sheet, <laughs> way to read it for you, Mr. Maverick. That would be handy. You know what I mean, just to prove it. <laughs> uh, I recommend uh, the move to to recommend approval of site plan SI 16-002 for Prescott Lakes Villas for a 200-unit phase multifamily apartment complex. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, we have a comprehensive sign package. CC number item 7, CC 16002, comprehensive sign package for Thumb Butte Medical Center. Frank?
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a comprehensive sign plan for a project that most of us know as the marketplace at the crossings. But they're looking at changing the name to the Thumb Butte Medical Center because all of the uses going in there are medical. And the topography of the site and the location of the buildings down below the road, that type of thing, the um, developers requesting a comprehensive sign plan to allow them to get a sign that's a little bit larger than what we would normally allow for a freestanding sign. The freestanding sign is shown here. No, it's not going in the middle of the street. That's just a close-up view. Somebody actually asked me that. Why are they putting the sign in the travel lane? Um, they would like to put the sign off to the side a little bit um, so that people going up and down Willow Creek Road can see the names of the doctor's offices and medical facilities are going into that project. As you know, there's a bunch of pad sites in there, and they're being developed right now. There's that new building that went up with the brown front and the stone. Looks kind of nice sitting there. The signs on each building are about 40 square feet to be tasteful and be compatible with each buildings, each of the buildings. One of the primary purposes for a comprehensive sign plan is to have uniformity of design. And I believe if you have those type of signs on the buildings with the freestanding sign, with the black outline, the trim, uh, it seems to, seems to work. The key here is that they're allowed between 50 and 100 square feet maximum, depending on the road frontage length for their wall signs. Their wall signs are proposed to be about 40 square feet, so they're a little bit smaller on their wall signs than the code would allow today. For the freestanding sign, the total freestanding sign area would be normally limited to 32 square feet with a height of 12 feet. So they're asking for a height of, let's see, what was it? 17 and a half square feet, oh, sorry, linear feet high, and 40 square, um, forgive me, lost my place. 60 square feet of freestanding sign area, thank you. And what's code? Code would allow them 40. only 32 square feet. <clears throat> and shorter in height. So they're asking for five foot taller, and, a, and about 30, 28 square feet more, can given the number of uses that are going in there with the pad sites. Can you tell me what the net height is from the sidewalk to the top of that sign? It won't be 17 feet. I can't. It'll be dependent on the final location of the freestanding sign because it slopes down a little bit here. Now there's a steep slope there. So when it slopes down, they have to work with the Public Works Department to find a spot for the... Um, utilities and all that go down that way so it's probably going to be maybe three or four feet shorter yeah, by from the sidewalk. to me from looking at it that it would be pretty close to conforming if you measured it from the sidewalk. Just about. If you measured it from the sidewalk it's probably within a foot or two. Yeah. Well you know I like you say the sign is going to be lower anyway. It's probably pretty close to code and there's quite a bit of quite a few users in that building it's so you know for giving a little more square footage I don't see a problem with that if there were only three users or a primary user that's a whole different issue but obviously they've got uh, quite a few users in there so I think uh, I don't see a problem with giving a little bit more slack for that sign and we've, that was we've my done thought it before. too, that just having the user's names on that uh, sign is pretty minimal right? and pretty, uh, very little distraction for drivers. Right, I, um, I agree. I Commissioners, any I comments? I do. Yes, sir. I agree with the, I don't have any trouble with the height of that sign. I know that intersection extremely well. Um, I, I'm not sure that. I guess all we vote on is the height of the sign and the shape of the sign. 
Well, you're voting on the ver the deviation right. from requirements that right. the sign is compatible, that there's uniformity among the signs, that its uh, character fits with, you know, the rest of the buildings. I, the, the problem I'm having with this sign, uh, you know, and I, it needs it needs signage, and I like the height. My, my problem is that corner gets uh, stopped up now with the uh, the the, the, pay, uh, the dollar place. It's a funny access into that driveway. And so cars going south uh, have a hard time turning into there. Cars turning left into it also have to worry about the kind of bumper going down into the property. But my concern with the sign is there's too many names on this for anybody to really notice it until they're stopping at that intersection. I just don't know why they have to put... I know why every user wants their name on a sign. Right. I get it. I'm fighting it all the time. I get that. But I'm not sure that, frankly, Thumb Butte Medical Center uh, or a sign or just a couple of names so people see, oh, yeah, that's the place I'm going to. All these names, they're not going to see these names from the road. I think one of the concerns is that the wall signs, given, well, one, they, they are proposing wall signs less, so there's kind of a trade off. The wall signs are smaller than what the code would even allow them to have. Uh, but the buildings themselves sit well below Willow Creek, and nobody will be able to see the wall sign identity from Willow Creek. I agree with you. My, my concern is that they're not going to be able to read these signs very readily, even from Willow Creek, and they're going to slow down and stop on Willow Creek Road before they make this turn, which is not an easy turn anyway. Don't be such a spoil sport. <laughs> huh? Don't be such a spoil sport. I can't sport. help it. It's genetic. Slowing down at an intersection is maybe not a bad idea. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, Frank, uh, I'm going to apologize for my memory, but what is the signage uh, as far as the uh, main entrance sign to the crossings, which is five, six, seven, eight hundred feet further yeah. south than this? Now, the crossings have a number of buildings, a number of streets in it. What do they have out at the street? I don't recall don't any, nothing. any large sign no. at all other than the ground mounts as you get into the center. Yeah. Personally, I'd be more comfortable with a limit saying um, you know, 14 feet above the sidewalk, something like that, because somebody else comes along. The difference in height is almost 50%. I mean, 18 feet would be 50% increase. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get other people saying, well, you let that guy do a 50% increase in height. And I I agree, you know, it's it's almost like you want to address people to the complex, not to the individuals. Um, you know, the, the office complex at uh, Thumb Butte Road and Plaza Drive, you know, it's very understated. It's a, it's a nice complex. If you're going there, you know you're going there. I mean, you know, in the world of GPS, you plug in the address, you know, you turn left when the computer tells you to turn left. I mean, I think that the individual signs, although they are liked, are not as necessary as they used to be. And a 50 percent or almost 50 percent increase bothers me. So, like I said, I'm, I'm comfortable if we said, you know, 14 feet above the sidewalk or you put that in as a maximum, something along those lines so it's not and a uh, 17 and a half foot tall sign. I don't know. Well, I know this is a medical center and, and this is not uh, compulsive uh, consumer driven signage. So people are going there because they have an appointment or something else. Um, my concern was there's no uh, street number on here. You yeah. think if somebody says they're going mm -hmm. to uh, 2960 mm -hmm. to see my doctor and the, for the first time, they're going to be looking for that mm -hmm. number rather than the name. Well, there's a reason why the owner wants to have this sign here. It's not just doing it, to spending the money just for fun. How, uh, can we, how about the sign guy? Let's, let's get a, some information. <laughs> sign guy. That's the nicest thing that's ever been said to him. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Stefan Markov, 704 East Moeller. Um, well, the, the sign was designed for simplicity and in simple information so that people can find the, the uh, businesses there. And the fonts and the simple colors uh, give it for very effective uh, identification. 
also at night will be um, only the graphics will show up which the the black are showing black now they'll light up a light color at night so it will be very low light pollution as well um, the actual cabinet size is uh, 14 feet so another two or three feet from the ground level will give it up to 17 feet or so I see uh, I don't know, what else can I, uh, I, I ask a well why I mean why are they they don't have a sign now why are they adding this sign who is they the the owners of the there is a sign there now. oh there is a sign there now. well yeah we, we did the original sign for the uh, plaza whatever it, I forget the name marketplace yeah the market right 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 and this will go more or less in the place of the existing one but it will go a little a little bit higher there okay I, I have a question George yeah you know why wouldn't they just want a monument sign out front you know that's that looks nice and then down in down when you get down there with your car to where you're not worried about traffic then there'd be a directory with the you know pointing it to where you want to go uh, you know this just seems like you're trying to mix the directory with the monument well we wanted to kill two birds with one shot you know so the monument and directory uh, combine it in one structure and from the street uh, because most of the buildings are practically invisible the sign is the only identity for m most of the businesses there and each individual business was restricted to 40 square foot because once you go into the property it really whether it's 20 square feet or 100 it doesn't matter yeah. Terry you got a question my question for Frank are we talking about just the size of the sign it seems like we're trying to design this guy's sign to how many he how many listings he can have on it why don't we get back to just just what is allowed mm -hmm. and move in that direction and not try to design the guy's sign for him but I do like the idea about <laughs> having a monument perhaps and some signing down inside something that would identify the complex but I think we're getting a little far you know how many signs well he's allowed what he's allowed a monument sign he's allowed a monument it sign be 14 feet high and 32 square feet right uh, 12 feet high and 32 square feet <coughs> okay and he's at 17 5 and 60 square feet okay uh, because he has a double frontage he's actually allowed two freestanding signs but the Willow Creek Road uh, right-of-way out front won't allow him to put one out there so he's kind of impacted by that option to put one out near the sidewalk but so. would they each be half the size of what's allowed them no they could each have their full size for each frontage they could yes so we're already ahead of the game with only just one sign two feet well okay guys if that's the way you feel you know just to go with what's allowed and he can just he's gonna have to just readjust if that's the way you're feeling I personally don't have a problem with a couple more feet and a few more square feet, but that's... I don't have a problem with the size of that sign. I, I do think it's going to be a traffic issue with these little these little signs that people are going to have a hard time reading from Willow Creek Road. I think, Stefan, I think they're... My opinion is, and you and I have battled signs for a lot, I, they're not going to see those names. My original submittal had probably six panels, you know, so the owner kept... Uh, revising it oh, okay. and so we, we ended up it's very possible that we may reduce them I cannot guarantee it this time so yeah I'd like to see that reduced because I, so I do think it's a congestion and I, I think everybody's a little hesitant you're, you're looking to, at to the, give a more brown mouth <coughs> sign that's going to identify Thumb Butte Medical Center perfect and the local tenants where are you located doctor right. I'm in the Thumb Butte Medical yeah. Center and then they get down into the project and then here are our individual signs saying dr jones yeah my thought, that's my thought that's what i'm i i know but that's about. not what they want obviously and they can have a free a, a monument sign and it can be 12 feet high and 32 square feet so if you guys feel otherwise then uh, refuse this this additional square footage and height then and they can go do meet the code 
Is that's that the way I'm looking at it. Well, the I'll entertain a motion to uh, deny. If you take into excuse me, sorry, did I? Sure, go. Um, but if you take into consideration the speed limit and because it's a four-lane road now, uh, the sign becomes effective literally when one is stopped at the light because of the amount of information there. And the reason we designed it in such a simple way so that you know all the letters and the colors are just in, in two different shades, so it makes it easy to read. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> there is only you know so much one can do in 60 square feet of area in order to convey the correct information. George, you have <coughs> some I, bit of wisdom you'd like to wisdom. Thank you. Put out. Uh, two, two issues to consider for you. Um, it, it is a comprehensive sign plan request, so it's not just a variance to the size of the sign. So you're looking at the package. Um, how much sign is going on the building? How much signage is going on the freestanding? Is it compatible? Is it reasonable? Is it, does it meet those criteria that Frank laid out in his staff report for you? The second part of this is specifically just for you uh, as planning commissioners because you, you looked at uh, some time back a proposal for us to redesign our sign code. And one of the features if that redesign of the sign code moves forward would would be to allow for a taller freestanding sign on faster speed limit roadways. In this particular case, it would allow a sign up to 16 feet tall uh, by right, um, just through a permit process. It, it doesn't take away from this comprehensive sign proposal, but it's something to keep in the back of your mind that should that go through, the height of the sign becomes less of an issue for you. It's, it's the compatibility, the sign design for the whole subdivision, those types of issues are much more important for a comprehensive sign plan than whether or not it's deviating from the current height limitation. Because again, that height limitation can change with, with modifications to the code, and that could be something that goes to city council you know, over the summer or next fall. Um, at, at this point, it's the comprehensive nature of the sign package that you really should be spending a little more time on, I think, based on uh, the proposal uh, that's been given to you and based on the criteria for comprehensive sign plans. So don't worry necessarily that the freestanding sign's taller. Worry more about is it all a comprehensive sign package and is it a reasonable sign package. Um, we, we understand from a staff perspective, and I think most sign contractors also understand that property owners always want more, more information on a sign than it makes it actually unreadable uh, in the long term. Uh, six sign panels with the name of the place on top certainly makes sense. Ten, twelve sign panels that are all a foot tall, you're right, no one's going to be able to read those. But generally what happens is you discover that and you consolidate sign panels and pretty soon you have something that's readable there because if it doesn't function, it will get changed. That's right. And, and I, I actually agree with everything you just said. And uh, we don't have, you know, I don't know if I'm missing pack the pieces of paper out of my packet, but I don't see the rest of the comprehensive sign package. It's only two pieces in this case. And I'm sorry, That's I'm it. stealing Frank's thunder. It's only two pieces in this case. There's a freestanding sign, and, the and then there's the signs the on the individual buildings that are at limited to, will be limited to 40 square feet apiece, where right now they could exceed uh, 50 square feet and up to 100, depending on the size of the building. So there's so this 40 is square feet. Of what the, the so how much? So 40 how much? square foot per building, and this larger sign as a freestanding. So there's a trade-off between total, yeah. larger building versus larger freestanding. So there, what's the total amount they're allowed, and what do they got here showing us? Is it well, is it a trade-off? It's yeah, it's quite a bit of a trade-off, really. The length of the building could be increased. Their minimum is 50 square feet. They get that by right. Okay. Any linear footage over 50 linear feet for a building, they get one square foot additional. So if the building was 65 linear feet long, they could have 60 square, 65 square feet of wall signage. If the building's 110 linear feet, they get maxed out at 100 square feet of wall signage. And many of these pad sites are quite big. <laughs> Frank, uh, is there like six pad sites in that subdivision? Actually, I believe it would see one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six or seven. 
And this, this pad site right here is actually going to have two businesses in it, a, uh, a pharmacy and a uh, clinic. Ah. So, so there's only two existing buildings and there's seven potential, you know, so we, we should be really looking at an overall site plan here of some kind and well, to understand okay. what's going on. Yeah. Um, the site plan's been approved in the past. It's already been approved years right, ago. It doesn't really the individual yeah. pads. I think it is there's just six two pads buildings, in there. So. There might be more, more, more. There's six pads, as I recall that site, but there could be more users who share the thing. That I, I, uh, I still think, I still think this is a this, this sign is a major distraction up front with the small one. So I, I'd rather see this sign be a, a identity to the project. I don't want to belabor the point. It sounds pretty picky even to me, but. This is a major distraction. People will not see it from Willow Creek Road. It, it looks, it doesn't look good. I think they're better off having a gorgeous sign saying, get in here for your health, and then they can figure out where to go. Yeah, but if they go with what's allowed, it's not gonna change it much. It's gonna maybe take two panels off and, and get a little narrower, you know? Well, I just, yeah. And would the and other sure. option be <laughs> two signs? Yes. Well, they could have yeah. two signs. I mean, if that yeah. was our well, choice, let's, hey, I'll tell you what. one consolidated yeah. sign and let's two signs would let's be even more Let's see where we are. Yeah. But there's a, excuse me, there's quite a bit of drop in there, as you can see. And I agree with that. There's only one place for a sign there, really, and that's where the, the sign and is. And it's right. probably four or five feet below the street. Right. So. Yeah. And also, I may add that the, the individual signs for the businesses will, will have, uh, they will be allowed hello illuminated letters which will, which is very low light polluting and individual graphics so there will be no panels and uh, no so we call are you working with an overall the question like site developer on all of that this yes. or are there individual ownerships of each building no, I'm, and yeah, I'm working with the owner of the development the so there is one owner I think there's one owner for all the pad sites and he's a medical doctor, and he's bringing in medical uses for all the pad sites. Okay. So the layout of the the sign is just a, a proposal. It may not end up it may end up with six panels or a little more. So well, that's the maximum that we propose there, okay. according to his request. Let's let's go ahead and take a vote. And see where we stand. Uh, I'll 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 make a pro a. Uh, I'll make the motion that we approve the comprehensive sign package CC16002 for Thumb Butte Medical Center. I'll second it. Okay. Any more discussion? Let's I think I'd like to see a limitation on the number of panels on that sign on Willow Creek Road. Why? Okay. Let's <laughs> Lynn vote it down. I will. And then, and then you're gonna, they're going to have to re revise it. Right? Because it's my, a distraction. My okay. uh, pre-vote comment is, you know, is the one of the address and, that, and maybe it's more something for staff to look at in the future you know can oh. we get some more addresses oh, on I the agree. Street? they'll yeah. have to have an address on it for the fire department anyway okay. yeah okay. yeah, yeah it has to probably there will be a range of starting from one okay uh, yeah. to, i think there's about four or five addresses yeah. there so we'll start from one to another okay i have a motion and a second do we have a second yeah, yeah a second. any further discussion no all those in favor raise your right hand say aye Aye. Four. Opposed? <laughs> what is three? Okay. It's three to four? four, four to three. Hey, Ken, remember Passes. Donald. <laughs> okay. Comprehensive sign package is, is approved. All right, we're going to take a five-minute break. You sure it's five minutes? Thank you. <laughs> It'll take you that long to get to the bathroom. <laughs> I, Come on. I disagree. I go there to get my car working all the time. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going south and what was it? Yeah. I was going south and there was somebody trying to go over that park. Well, I mean, he's very much of an artist. Yeah, but you know, I know it must be. You look at crossings, which is. Yes. And there's no reference monuments other than the crossings. We did the stats on it. Would you believe that if the crossings were at high rise, it'd be a 20 story building? Yeah. 245,000 plus these. I gotta make it. Yeah. Okay, a 20 story building. And you're right. It says the crossing. It says the Where are you? I'm in the crossings off Willow yes, Creek Road. Where are you? I'm in the so and so. You need a map? 
and an Indian guy <laughs> to find where you're going. <laughs> well, it is. Put 25 times on the But again, they got Clearwater Drive. So if your doctor, like mine, is, is on Clearwater Drive, it says the crossings in the crossings on Clearwater Drive. But the issue is part of the issue here is that the driveway. It's not easy. You don't go down there fast. Yeah, I would prefer to see a monument sign at the whatever height they want it down that hill. Yeah. But what it says is the so and so medical center. Yes. Simple. Or urgent. Medical center, urgent care. Pharmacy. Maybe three big ones. Yes. So you're not confusing I'm not looking for Dr. You know, Joe Smoke. Get older, or, hard time or, or. Hey, you talking about me? I'm not looking for Dr. Haja Jotoli Ayala Hala Mahaya. You speak Lebanese very well. You hear that. Very much Yeah. I got to see this. Yeah. No, she doesn't. She's tied up. I got a date. In my dreams. In my dreams. Oh, yeah. I just think it's a distraction. I think that's part of the sign concept, too. What do you want? I loved it when Scottsdale came up with the sign over there. Out of the way. Yep. You knew where everything was, right. but it didn't have everything that no. every business wanted on there. I got I got a little 120 square foot office. What am I going to do? Put a big monument in the front? You know, you tell somebody where you are. I'm in the Willow Creek. I you the town was wrong. can't talk like that in here. <laughs>
move along, finish this off. Uh, item number eight, Arizo, uh, 16-001 for Elm Grove Apartments, Gill Gardner Way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is not an action item for you today. It's been uh, advertised as a rezoning. It requires a public hearing, and that right. is scheduled for your July 14th meeting. So this is just an introduction to you and give you an opportunity to ask us any questions so that we can pursue uh, answers to those for the public hearing. Okay. Uh, the area in question is shown uh, on the map. It, it is a single family zoning in between a residential office to the north uh, the RO zoning allows for either commercial offices or residential uses uh, and multifamily zoning to the south. Uh, that is a developed multifamily apartment building. The proposal for this site is to rezone it to multifamily medium, the same as that property south of it, uh, and to construct a, a, a small uh, multifamily development, seven residential units. There's proposal is seven residential individual residential buildings on the site um, there are a few site plan issues associated with this that are still in the works uh, fire department turnaround is necessary and the dumpster location will probably have to be modified in order to accommodate that turnaround uh, that's at the rear of the property back here the number of buildings the number of parking spaces and the setbacks all comply with the requirements for multifamily medium zoning um, again, from a compatibility standpoint, we're looking at the neighborhood and what is already there. Uh, nearby properties being a combination of multifamily, single family, and commercial leaves you a pretty broad range of what can be considered compatible. Uh, pretty much any of those uses translated onto this property would be compatible with the design. There is a Gale Gardner neighborhood plan that follows the route of Gale Gardner from its north end all the way to the south end at Gurley Street. That plan supports rezonings north of Fair Street, and Fair Street is located here. So rezonings north of Fair Street to either a like commercial uses, such as the RO, or to multifamily uses, should development pressure be leading in that <coughs> direction. Um, Staff believes, based on the uh, criteria in the Gail Gardner plan, that this proposal is in full conformance with the, um, the intent of that plan and with the specific language that limits those changes to north of Fair Street. The developer proposed um, applicant for this project is not able to be here today. That was another reason why we advertised the uh, public hearing for your meeting of July 14th. Uh, but I can attempt to answer questions either relating to the zoning or to um, the site plan if you have any. Again, this will be an action item for you on that agenda of the 14th. Are these all two-bedroom units? Yes, they are. Okay. George, how many square feet? Oh. Go ahead. Cleaned out here. Uh, I'm curious why they hid the handicap parking clear back. Uh, uh, one, corner there. Due to the number of units, only one of them has to be fully handicap accessible. That parking space will need to be closest to whichever one of those units. And I believe at this point they picked this one to be the handicap accessible unit, which means the handicap space needs to be adjacent to it. And reverting back to what Frank said the minimum was for parking spaces, it looked like me those parking spaces are only 18 feet deep. Now, uh, do they use the two and a half foot beyond that hangover to make up for? The spaces will need to be nine by 19. So the measurement he has there, if you look at the location of it, that, that would allow the additional foot of depth on the final site plan without interfering with the two-way traffic on the main drive aisle. So the, the spaces will have to be 19 feet deep. Is there parking on Gail Gardner there? I thought we had one before uh, that we did have parking yes, on Gail Gardner. I believe Gail Gardner allows for parking on street in this block. As you get closer to the stop sign south of here, it there's a um, point where it becomes no parking. Um, we do not count those parking spaces towards the minimum requirement for the development. He has to provide all of that required parking on site. Right. How big are these units? 
Fourteen fifty-six square feet according to the Yes. Fourteen fifty-six. That's what it, uh, based on the dimensions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, those spaces they can may stick two park models together. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, they might <laughs> not quite. <laughs> um, the square footage may be adjusted because, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is a need for a fire department turnaround at the right. rear, which is going shift the dumpster location somewhere else and shift at least one of the parking spaces somewhere else and as a result of that they may need to reduce the square footage of the individual units just slightly to provide that additional space for one more parking space yeah, and, and having the front wall of your house whatever it is two three feet two or three feet from the driveway is not great but anyway i mean it's an interesting uh, It's a different approach. design. They're, oh, they're, yeah. Normally for this type of site, you would see something similar to what's just to the south of it, where it's a single building with multiple units in it. Yeah. Um, they're trying to do something that um, provides more affordable housing, and they are talking about keeping these below market rate. Um, it, to do that, they wanted to provide some individual space, and they felt that separate mm -hmm. units and separate buildings was more home-like than, than a standard it's an old apartment complex. It's an old motor court. It is, very it's much exactly like the old motor court is. design. Except that the intent, acre sign over the driveway. You know? <laughs> except that the intent is for long-term <laughs> residential use. Okay, and we've got, we've got MFM uh, uh, next door That's to it. That's correct. Just to the south is multifamily medium. Just to the north is residential office, which will allow multifamily or single-family residential as well as office uses. And further north from there is multifamily high, which is um, our highest intensity, highest density uh, zoning. All right. Any questions? Is the uh, owner here? No, he's not here. He's right. not here. Okay. Again, this is not an action item or... today, but if you have yeah, specific okay. issues you'd like me to bring back information on. I don't really on. have any questions on it. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Feasible, yeah. compatible. Yeah. Yeah. My questions were answered. Mine are fine. A general plan and the neighborhood plan called for it. All in favor. Yeah, it's no problem. With it It meets the Gail Gardner a neighborhood plan. Yes, sir. That's the important thing. I think that's a great infill project. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. You will see it back on your next agenda. Okay. Uh, any, stuff like this. any city updates? Uh, just one, and Frank's going to handle that for you. Walden Ranch. If you remember Walden Ranch, the property, the development behind Pippin Museum, mm -hmm. that um, big yes, we used to be a big project. Uh, Tom just wanted me to update. It did go to City Council and received preliminary plat approval. Um, there is one change that happened between your seeing it and them seeing it. They went from 285 units down to 215 units. Same amount of open space, maybe even a little bit more where the other units were. About the same because I think they increased some lot sizes and the trail of course is still there so they did get their approvals from City Council to move forward the final plot but Tom wanted me to let let you know that it went from 285 to 215 do we know why it went from why they reduced it by 70 no I don't I don't know I think they looked at it from a purely market standpoint for lot size some of the lots were a little bit on the small side under the SF6 zoning and the PAD process. And I think they looked at increasing individual lot sizes, which they did, just by a few more feet each, which caused a reduction in the number of units. Because that's a big, that's 25%. It is. That's but I think reduction. they were looking at marketability of the lots from their, yeah. mar from their own individual market studies. Great. Yeah. But they, they were also previously going to fill in some of the old uh, Granite Creek down here, you know, reclaim mm -hmm. some of that property with construction and moving in material, and they chose not to fill in as much. So That's correct. Because yeah. they had a lot of costs That's associated great. with that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anything else? No, sir. We're adjourned. Can spend more time on the side? I like that new process.